Hey everyone, welcome back to another exciting episode of Attack and Productions. Today at Bancroft, I'm bringing you all another deck profile. Not just any deck profile, but the set for Piccolo one that I played uh, with Fluff in our kind of three year anniversary, or actually technically we're on year four now, but you know, I mean, we wrapped up three years, it was amazing. Some of you asked for this uh, deck profile, so I kind of re it together after uh, playing Chill this past weekend. So, hope you all enjoy, and to be told, once I go through it, if you have any uh, kind of advice, put it in the comments. Let's all kind of share and make this deck a little bit better. All right, and there's buttons for free to click them. Piccolo. So old school leaders were very funky. Either some of them had unique ways of drawing on the leader, or didn't have a way of drawing. Piccolo was one that could draw, but you had to swing towards your opponent's leader card. Once you establish an awakening, which is for less uh, life, you choose two cards, switch them to active mode, and flip this card over. Permanent, if you have two Mnekians on board uh, in the battle area, this card gains crit, and when this card attacks, draw one card and choose up to one Mnekian in your battle area, and it gains 5,000 power for the duration of the turn, which is really handy, because some of the uh, Mnekians we play are only 10Ks. So, start the deck off. Planet Namek. I do only play three of them in this deck, because it has a lot of ways of pulling cards from the deck, so thinning the deck out. It has a ways of drawing a crap ton of cards itself. So I feel like four may have gotten clunky. Now, granted, in some of the testings, I, I felt like, I think like maybe like one or two matches, I felt like, man, I wish I had a fourth point in Namek. But three always felt comfortable to me in the long run. Uh, it is a field card. Activate main for one green energy once per turn. Choose one of your cards in your hand. Place it in your drop here. Look at the top five cards of your deck. Choose up to one Mnekin with energy cost two or less among them and play it. And then shuffle your deck afterwards. So it's just a good way of um, paying one card to play a two drop from the top of your deck. Now, granted, you have to search top five cards of your deck. And we do have ways of modulating that as well. So we'll get into that when we get there. So for thinning, it assimilate. I mean, you, you can't beat this card. Choose one green or yellow Mnekin with energy cost two or less from your deck and add it to your hand. Like, you, you can't beat that. The Mnekin package. So, we have two uh, Urgent Aid commies. It You play, you draw one card, so it's a canter. Pretty nice. Um, it does have the auto when your opponent switches in active energy, uh, switches one of their energies to active mode using a non awaken skill during their turn. I can shift, choose one of their energies to place in the drop area. But typically, it's just a one drop, draw one card. You can't beat that at all. My favorite one to play, though, on the Piccolos was Piccolo Jr. Um, it has Barrier, Bond 2, if you have two more Mnekins in the battle area. Uh, when this card attacks, draw one card. So typically, you know, if you turn 1 that, turn 2, you play this, Bond 2 is activated. So when you swing up your lead, you swing this card, they're getting draws off that. And that begins the all the excess, excess draw link. The next uh, Mnekian Mech card is Nail, which has Bond 2 as well. When this card attacks, you draw one card, then it gains 5,000 power for duration of turn. So it becomes a 15k draw one card. Doesn't have barrier, but, you know what I mean, you're getting a draw off the attack, and it becomes a 15k, so you no longer have to worry about comboing with this card as well. Two power barrier Piccolos. It's a 15k of barrier, I mean, it's protected. Two speed attack Piccolo Juniors. It's a 15k with crit. So I have a variety of pickles I could pull from here, or sorry, a variety of Manekians, just depending on what I need for what situation. Uh, the next couple of Manekians are my Super Combos, which are probably the best one to go if your leader is a Green Manekian. If your life is far less, draw one card, and the card gains 10,000 power uh, combo power. It's a five life combo card, which is pretty nice. Once I've established a bunch of Manekians to the board, or just enough, apparently, uh, in my and Fluss matchup, the one-drop cantrips. Kami, the Watcher. Permanent, Bond 2. Reduce energy cost of this card in your hand by 2. I mean, so you get two cards right on the board, you pay one energy, draw one card, hit the 10k beater, so you could swing from afterwards if you wanted to. King Piccolo, Lord of Terror. Double Strike uh, is normally 5 cost, but the Bond 3... Reduces the energy cost of this card in your hand by two, so it makes it a three drop, 25k double strike, which is pretty nice. And then when you play this card, choose it to one of your opponent's battle cards with energy cost five or less and KO it. So it could potentially get rid of a problem card as well, which is always nice. The problem is this card falls into that uh, error where it's a great, strong, powerful card, 
but it has no barrier, has no deflection, so it could be taken care of pretty easily. But if you manage to get this card on the board, it is a 25 double strike. That's pretty powerful, especially towards late game pushes, maybe. And the last Manekian card I play in this deck is, of course, Lord Slug, Darkness Parasite. It's actually one of my favorite Slug cards. If your opponent has three or more energy when this card is played, you and your opponent, uh, sorry, your opponent may choose one of their unison cards, place it in the owner's drop area. If they didn't, you and your opponent draw one card, then you choose all of your opponent's battle cards and KO them. So it could be a potential board wipe, it could be a unison killer. It just breaks down to whatever you need it to be. Now, granted, in most cases, people don't typically get rid of their unisons. I have had it in one match, not in this particular deck, but with this particular card, where my opponent did choose a unison in the end, which I was kind of surprised, but. They were trying to go for game. They needed what they needed for their next turn. As a tech option, I play one surprise tech Frieza. There are ways of KOing cards, not a lot, but if I had the opportunity to arise, why not use it? Like I said, it get rid of the card. And then also my next card. Currently I play the two Demigra, Unison of Sorcery, which it's great green unison. When your opponent attacks it, you can take a life instead of uh, removing a marker from it. Plus one gains 10,000 power, minus three KOs, potentially two cards. So you're good to go. And truth be told, didn't realize this while I was building this deck, I did not have four Golden Frieza, uh, Unison of Malice. I feel like this deck is definitely better as four of these, or at least three of these in one Demigra, because this card is what allows you to uh, modulate for Planet Namek. So. Plus one, active main, draw one card, then choose one card in your hand, place it on top of your deck. This card gains crit for the turn, so it becomes a 15k crit, which is not bad, and then you pay one energy, discard a card, search top five cards of your deck for play dynamic, and whatever card you put on top is typically the card you want to play afterwards. So it just allows you to cycle what you need to your deck in order to play it. If you have to use the minus two, it's not a bad either, which active main until the end of your opponent's next turn. If your opponent can't attack with battle cards, uh, unless they choose one of their battle cards of energy cost two or more and place it in the owner's drop area. So, and the last units I play, like I said, it's very weird. I play a 2 2 2 right now just because I just didn't have four of those. Is my favorite green unison, Resolute, uh, the Agent of Destruction Vegeta, Double Strike Crit 20, 20 to 25, depends on if you use the plus one or not, and can potentially board wipe. Sorry, it will board wipe when you choose one card in your hand. And then the minus five is an activate. Uh, makes, your, makes your opponent discard cards. So, with these unisons, we activate the cool unison cards, which you're all familiar with. You got the Frieza counterplay, which came as a card. Um, and then we have the Dormant Potentials, which I would play three of. I mean, Dormant Potentials are great negate. It doesn't necessarily negate the attack, but I mean, you've heard us talk about it plenty of times. Your opponent going attack twice in one turn with it. And Frieza is just a high cost card. That's a 10k beater as well. It KO the card. For my next set of negates, this was very toolboxy for me, and it was just kind of broke down to what I needed in the moment, and I thought about making two of these, but they all ended up becoming one of just for the scenario. So, Homicidal Clones, uh, it's a counterattack that creates a blocker token. When your life is several less, you can activate this counter by taking one life as your hand, so it's a free two cost that plays a blocker, so it helps me stay alive a little bit longer if I need to. So if I know a super aggro deck, I could just go... Negate, play a blocker. On their next attack, I could block with that token. And then still have comfortably four life potentially to take from if I need to. Shocking Death Ball. Sparking five. Or you pay one energy for it. KO is a battle card, two or less. So pretty black hole. A negate that doesn't get a lot of play, but it works perfect with the Frieza counterplay. So negate the attack. Then you may choose one of your battle cards, negate its skills, place it in the draw area. If you do draw one card, and choose any number of your opponent's uh, non-token battle cards with a total energy cost less than or equal to the energy cost of the card that you place in the draw area with its skills and KO it. So, you counterplay a card, then you negate with pretty black hole. You're potentially getting rid of cards up to 5 energy from your opponent's side of the field. I know this is Piccolo, and... You could play Special Beam Cannon, but obviously this is a mono green route. So instead I went with Cells Earth Destroying Kamehameha because it's practically the same thing, just with a 5k bonus to it, where Special Beam Cannon is a 10k boost for one energy that makes your opponent discard a card. This is a 15k boost instead, and if all your energy is green, your opponent has to choose one card in their hand and get rid of it. So I'm playing mono green practically, so it was just a better option. 
Okay, this next card isn't mono green. I get it, but in my experience with King, uh, sorry, with uh, Piccolo, I always had problems having a really low hand. And yes, I know I added a lot of the cards that either draw on play or they they draw on attacks and whatnot. I was just afraid that it's still a possibility that my hands get down pretty low. So I wanted to add some unisons. It gives me also cards to potentially combo with when um, I'm swinging with a 10k and I don't have to worry about getting rid of another Piccolo or another Medekian card. And if I get to a point where I don't have anything else to pay for, I can just pay two energy, draw two new cards. It just felt really good. And truth be told, I don't think I've had a problem with hand control. I mean, with uh, my hand being low with this deck at all since I've been playing it. And last but not least, because the board can get uh, pretty wide unless your opponent's a jerk and they play a card that board wipes you, like in a mind match to happen with against Fluff. Selzino. Um, keep in mind, it has been eroded. So, it no longer has double strike, so it's ultimate deflect, energy exhaust, successor, auto if you have five or more, sorry, auto if you if it's you have five energy when you play this card. Uh, your opponent chooses three cards in your opponent's hand, place them in the drop area, then this card gains dual attack and quadruple strike for the turn. Keep in mind, the quadruple strike got moved into the auto, so you have to have five energy in order to get both of those off now. After that turn, it's just a 40k beater, which still isn't bad for a battle card, but you should be able to win if you play this card. Yeah, so that's about it. Hope you all enjoyed. Um, it was actually really fun kind of going back over to these old decks as well. So if there's anything you guys are interested in or kind of thinking like, hey, this is an old leader, give it a shot. Let me know in the comments. And with that being said, thank you for tuning in. Like always, read your cards, know your plays, and fluff out.